Hi everybody, it is October 7, 2020, Hurricane Delta flooding around the world. Let's get into it. It has slammed into Mexico, made landfall just moments ago as a Category 2 hurricane. Victor Kendo has the latest. Overnight, Hurricane Delta slamming into Mexico. The storm intensified from a tropical depression to a Category 4 hurricane in just over 36 hours. Winds reaching 145 miles per hour yesterday, taking aim at the popular resort towns of Cancun and Cozumel. Mass evacuations taking place ahead of the storm's landfall. It was very crowded. There's people running, screaming. Residents boarding up, preparing for the storm. A group of workers seen here securing the small plane, tying it down. The airport packed with people, hoping to catch one of the last flights out before it shut down. Just said, get me on any flight to the U.S. Don Becker and her daughters made it there, but were told to turn around. A whole bunch of us got in taxis. We got to the airport and they told us, nope, you can't stay overnight here. Vacationers stuck without a flight home are forced to ride out the hurricane in shelters, including Ben Bars and his girlfriend, Erin Silvers. Once they arrived, they found rows of pool lounge chairs turned into makeshift beds. This morning they were picking up the beach chairs, you know, we just thought that they would get washed away and we're sleeping on them now. Tens of thousands of guests had to evacuate their hotels, including our team. A very long morning ahead for everyone on the eastern tip of Mexico as Hurricane Delta bears down. Michael. All right, thank you so much. And that storm, it is far from over. It's now taking aim at the U.S. We're going to go to Ginger, who has more for us this morning. Good morning, Ginger. Good morning, Michael. It was a 106 mile per hour gust already recorded as it made landfalls a cat two on the Yucatan Peninsula there. It is going to move across the Yucatan and that land is going to shred it a bit. So you'll see it weaken even a little bit more and then re-intensify when it goes into those super warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. It has plenty of time to reinvigorate itself and head straight toward the Gulf Coast. I think anyone from Galveston and Lake Charles, Cameron, Port Arthur needs to be on alert all the way to coastal Mississippi for impacts. However, right here, Morgan's City, Lafayette, all of you need to be on alert for this to come very close to you, especially that bad side. Landfall Friday, Robin, and I want to show you that high pressure is what's driving it. I want to show you this map. It is kind of unbelievable to think. We've had nine landfalling storms already this season. Unbelievable to think. Not so unbelievable when man is controlling the weather. I am not going to get into it. You can take a look at my weather modification playlist on my Never Lose Truth channel, my primary channel. This is my backup channel. And by the way, for all of you who don't know about my primary channel, I will be back posting on my primary channel because I think, I think my punishment is over for my uh, whatever YouTube gave me the last time. I can't even remember. In fact, you know, I got, <laughs> I got a, and I was a little nervous because the subject heading of the email was copyright, YouTube copyright. I was like, oh, great. Hi, Never Lose Truth. Good news. The copyright claim on your video was released. Good example of a serious Christian. Huh. Don't even remember that one. All right, so uh, I will be back on Never Lose Truth. If you have not subscribed, I hope you come on over and subscribe. So, weather modification playlist, geoengineering playlist, directed energy weapons playlist. Don't, well, you can do whatever it is that you want. You can reveal your ignorance to the world and your immaturity when you claim that people who talk about weather modification are just crazy nut jobs. So, all right. Um, first time ever not being able to get anything on Nexrad reflex, reflectivity. And it's out of uh, University of Wisconsin. It's been blank for hours. 
which for me is very concerning considering what we have been seeing on radar well what I've been seeing on radar which I check and I make captures of several times a day we are being blasted with very dangerous frequencies all right so let's go to College of DuPage their radar is up um, and you do get different from um, each of these sites, you get different readings. It is now a common sight to see Doppler radar blasting away during the day. We didn't see this. Uh, the Doppler radar would start like late evening and then get worse and worse and worse. And for a very long time, it was pretty much the eastern half of the country. Very concerning what I'm seeing up here in Northern California with the fires. Okay. These pulsating frequencies not good. Look at this. Look at these extremely low frequencies the pulsating frequencies, the Doppler radar. All right, but right now it's flooding, right? Right now it's flooding. Um, well, here's Hurricane Delta. There's also what seems to be a glitch If you hear noise, the revving of the engine, that's the maintenance guy, the husband of the property manager who is so psychopathic and crazy. Yeah. Well, you see how it's being hit with frequencies right down here, right at the bottom. They're both crazy. Okay. Sorry. Well, the harassment continues. <laughs> Hang on. As an aside, if any of you have an extra three million I'd like to purchase this property and make it a really cool place to live. But even if you have an extra five dollars, that wouldn't hurt as well. All right, back to Hurricane Delta. It is so obvious that this is oh, a construction of man once again. Look at this. Look, at, I mean, it looks like what? A bad, I don't know, a bad crocheting job or look at how nicely defined it is right here. This thing is being hit with frequencies. You can see the frequencies right here. Let me get off that glitch because I feel like I'm just going to have a seizure. All right. Look at this. It's braided. It looks like a strand, uh, a thick strand or a thick uh, braid of hair or something. Oh, God. You know, people around the world are being so devastated. This thing is, from what I've seen, from what I've seen, it does not look like there was a whole lot of damage from this Hurricane Delta. But um, the way it's being reported is that it was pretty horrific. So, if anybody 
has come across videos or writings from ordinary people about what's happening in Cancun, Cozumel, this area of Mexico. Uh, please leave it below. Um, there is one thing true about me. I do not post polished videos. All right. Look at this. Look at this. This thing is not a natural hurricane. It is not a hurricane caused by climate change. And they're so huge these days. So huge. In fact, that reminds me. Look at this thing. This is what I captured last night. Couldn't believe it. It was uh, at 10.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Look at this. Oh, wow. Look, a manufactured cloud that's attaching itself to another manufactured cloud, to a row of manufactured cloud. The frequencies on this thing were very evident, very clear. There is a like a frequency wave going through this. As you can see, this black line. And it's, well, either breaking up or manufacturing more cloud. The frequencies, the hits from frequencies were very obvious. But, <laughs> oh my God, it's frightening, man, it's frightening that we have just, it's like this brain dead population that you can see how straight lined it is right here, straight lined right here. This is not natural. This is not how mother nature works, okay? She doesn't work like this. This is how man works. How man works. How man is using weather weapons to create an awful lot of destruction. This is not a hurricane. This is a weather bomb created by the weather terrorists. Look how unbelievably straight-lined it is. Oh, another straight-lined cloud. Come on. Okay. Oh, boy. We've been living this for decades, only getting worse and worse and worse. Every single year, 2020 has really just, wow, have they upped their game. And their game is to destroy life. It's to destroy life. And we can't get through to people. All right. Well, okay. That was last night. So, uh, destruction is real. Now, this is Cancun. Interesting is the shot of <sighs> the manufactured cloud grown. It's growing. It's gro You can watch this in your own community. Pay attention to what's happening in the sky. Pay attention to your clouds growing. They just grow. They don't move. They grow and grow and grow and grow. And they can pick up a whole lot of water vapor from the oceans 
move that cloud filled with a whole lot of moisture, hit it with a frequency, and boom, you got massive flooding. But so far, what I'm seeing is wind. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, a water main break again. There's a major water main break in Sherman Oaks that has forced parts of Ventura Boulevard to shut down this morning. LAPD says... Oh, <clears throat> if you want to see it, it will be linked to below. But you know what? Water main breaks are happening all over the place. So while we have the flooding from the weather terrorists, we also have these water main breaks. Oh, and then that mainstream media liar just goes on to talk about how, oh, it was the cold front and the warm front and oops, sorry, water main break. Holy shit, man, we've got to get it together, don't we? <laughs> All right. So, back to Cancun. What I've seen are some branches, some wires down. Yep. Damage to some buildings. I haven't seen massive flooding. But hurricanes are really wind events. Oh, what am I saying? I just traveled the world looking at all of the flooding, so I'm sorry. Cancun did get hit with flooding. So did Jamaica. Oh boy, so did St. Lucia. So, what I am saying is, from what I see, and then from what I hear mainstream media reporting, their reporting is very dramatic, but my feeling is, even if one home gets flooded, I'm sorry, uh... A whole lot of people just like to see massive destruction, the scale of it. As far as I'm concerned, one person having to deal with the flooding is, this is not right. This should never happen. It's happening now, so often, all over the world. And yeah, 2020, they have upped their game of destruction. And I'm so sorry that I said that there wasn't, from what I saw, not a lot of destruction. Yeah, it, it's hard. When you look at China, when you look at what's happening in India and Pakistan and Africa, African nations, well, it doesn't matter. One person destroyed. I'm sorry. These people need to be held to account, don't you think? They're, they are criminals. But lights off? Yeah. Yeah, very, very high winds sometimes would knock out power in certain areas. Now we have that power going out all the time, and it brings about sparks. Isn't that interesting? Arkansas. President Trump approves a major disaster declaration for Arkansas after historic flooding along the Arkansas River leaves several communities underwater. The evacuated homeowners are now returning to devastation as they begin the daunting process of rebuilding. Ben Brown reports from the city of Pine Bluff. Residents have begun making their way by boat to see what's left of their homes following historic flooding in Arkansas that turned neighborhoods into lakes. This first time I've been over here in a while, Yeah, I see the windows are all steamed up, and I opened the windows, which, 
that's not doing no good. The house of retired firefighter Bart Moore is completely underwater. I lost my wife uh, about a year and a half ago, and we built this house. Everything was like she wanted it. I'm going to probably tear it down as bad as I hate to. Communities like Dardanelle, Fort Smith, and Pine Bluff all felt significant impacts from the floodwaters as the Arkansas River reached record heights. We've had flood in the past, but not of this magnitude, uh, not at these levels. Um, you know, we're talking about reaching well above 51 feet. Um, it's just devastating uh, to have so many people displaced in these houses. Some residents only had time to grab a few belongings before evacuating. I got like two sets of shorts and two shirts, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that's about it. Now they're shifting their focus to moving forward with cleanup efforts. And I'm in the acceptance stage of what's going on, and it's just, I mean, just got to pick up and, and go on from here. Some of the houses here behind me are completely submerged in water, and authorities say it could take months until residents can start settling back in. And it seems that either you are consumed with having to protect your business or your home over and over, repeatedly, certainly for the Gulf Coast states, or you're consumed with having to repair your home. That's, this is only going to get worse. It's really only going to get worse. So, the flooding in France and Italy, wow. We're talking a massive hit. And when people say, my God, it looks like, it looks like, it was bombed that it was in a war. We are in a war. But look at what happens to this right here. Well, This is caused by frequencies. Now, I thought those red lights, that's the blinking light of this truck. Don't know what was underneath that to cause that. But the use of particularly the extremely low frequencies can bring about exactly what you are looking at. And that damage in France, man, the destruction the, in Italy, <laughs> unbelievable, man. It's unbelievable. It's so heartbreaking. People's lives are being destroyed. People are dying. Animals are dying. It's not just material destruction. It's destroying everything in a whole lot of areas. And, man, I mean... What are we, oh man, I can't.
Where, where are we now? Malaysia. Lebanon. People are being arrested. Stood and detained in southern Laos last week. Her alleged crime? Criticizing the slow Lao government response to floods that have affected hundreds of thousands of people. Huai Huang Saiboli, also known as Muai, lives in Ponton District, Champasak Province. She got into trouble for a Facebook Live posting. Here are some of the excerpts of that video. <laughs> คนรับฟังคือคอยเบาเลยคอยติดยอดตะปือตอนนี้ไปไซมาไซบอได้ถือครั้งไหวนามอ่อมแขวงเนาะพ่อล่ํานึงนี่นะสิปิ้นประโย
2020. We said in 2019 that 2020 was going to be a year like no other, and it has been. And it has been. Saudi Arabia? Hello, I got Saudi Arabia is not known for its flooding. Look at this roll cloud in Jamaica. Yeah. This is Hurricane Delta. Really? Really? Where was it? Oh, man. China. China. Man, China. Unbelievable. Look at this. Whew. And so much of the flooding around the world, they've hit farms. Well, you can know food shortages are going to be pretty bad all over the world. Okay, uh, Saudi Arabia. Again, there have been many cows washed away in the floods. Now, I'm not sure where this is, but it looks like uh, a video that I posted, I don't know, about a month ago. 
So who knows if this is from recent flooding. I don't know, but Pakistan. The rains began in August. In the southern port city of Karachi, they were the heaviest in almost a century. They lashed the surrounding province of Sindh. For two months, monsoon rains fell on already sodden ground, resulting in devastating floods. The World Food Program and Sindh government believe that more than 1.2 million people have lost more than 90% of their belongings and crops. 20 families live here and our village has been swept away. We haven't received any tents or rations yet. Now we are under the open skies seeking mercy from God. Residents in rural Sin say they feel abandoned by the government. They have been worst hit. Most families have lost livestock, nearly all their crops are ruined, and two-thirds of irrigation infrastructure is damaged. We lost everything in these floodwaters, our house, our cattle and our belongings. We hardly saved anything. There isn't any help from the government and we're faced with starvation and we don't have any money to rebuild our house. The Sindh government declared a state of emergency in late August. They say they're assessing the damage to infrastructure, like roads and communications, but are overwhelmed. And then you just listen to people fighting and fighting and fighting, back and forth, back and forth. It's not working. Systems around the world are collapsing. You cannot rely on your government. Why? Because your government is actually attacking you. St. Lucia. It shows you how much the flooding issue has not been dealt with in a decade. Right. Updated by a deluge of water on Monday, 10 years to the date of a great flood. Over 40% of the Denry village was submerged in 6 feet of water when heavy rainfall associated with the tropical weather system battered the community 10 years ago on October 6, 2010. Now, over a decade later, on October 6, 2020, the perennial flooding problem continues after overnight showers overtop the banks of nearby watercourses. Albert Bridges is the chair of the Denry South Disaster Preparedness Committee. Isn't it interesting? You have October 6, 2010, massive flooding. Then you have October 6, 2020, 10 years to the day, massive flooding. Do you think that that was a targeted hit on St. Lucia? Where is this? Nigeria. By this time around, even the people to come to school now is a problem. Secondly, we don't have enough teachers. Look at our people's, they finish schools, no appointments, no any other job. So please, we need government to assist us to employ our people so that we should have enough teachers to teach in the primary school. We don't enjoy, we don't enjoy our lives because water has total disturbance. So we are just around for one side. Moving, if you want to go to another house now, you can carry the boat, carry the boat from here to another house. So we don't enjoy our lives totally. So even to even to show food, we don't enjoy. So as it is now, what do you all think the government needs to do for you? So what we need from government is just to come out with food and uh, this thing canopy all that thing food canopy yeah and look how beautiful smiling 
what this this really got me how beautiful you know do we have to change and come up with some kind of system that we're actually protecting ourselves the criminality has become so massive the destruction on such a scale that unfortunately there is nothing we can do unless the world's people well we say this term wake up and start going after their government officials and getting rid of them fast. Jamaica. <sighs> Landslides. Yeah. This cut off access. And how much energy do people have for this? Well, you just have to keep going and keep going and keep going. But all of what we are viewing is literally shortening people's lives. The stress, the physical toll that all this takes, the mental toll. It's not just the physical damage that you're looking at. There's a whole lot of damage internally going on as well. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, but I wish upon a star. <laughs>